Drop it like it's hot, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're doing well, mate. I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News in the studio at side Stamford Bridge. All the people are there. I don't know why there's no game on. Um, and yes, Chelsea News. Today, we're going to talk about Chelsea looking back at Aubameyang, the issues, the structure, what's going on, the reservations, um, what's going... And by the way, a deal could be... <laughs> I'll say it again, only reacting to the headlines here, but ESPN saying a deal could be completed today. Of course, we got, what, today, tomorrow, and then Thursday is the deadline, I believe, for transfers. Things are popping off. Of course, we got more Premier League action. Billy Gilmore being linked to uh, Brighton, which would have to be like a permanent sale, I guess. Lots to get into. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, we might talk about De Jong as well. Please do drop a like on video. Helps me out a lot. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Let's see if we can get over 3,000 likes. Thank you for doing that, friends. Uh, you're welcome to subscribe. Jesus burping into the mic. <laughs> Professional. Should you choose to do so, hit that sweet, sweet bell, baby. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Gilmore, the Billy Esther, the young Scottish Pirlo, has been given a squad number on the Premier League website. Number 35. What does that mean? I don't know. People speculating after Conor Gallagher's difficult start to Premier League life at Chelsea Football Club that maybe Thomas Tuchel's considering alternative in Billy Gilmore? Mm, I don't know. Um, he'd been linked... Uh, Fabrizio Romano tweeted out about Gip Billy Gilmore potentially going to Brighton, Chelsea negotiating a deal with Brighton. Now, you might be thinking, ooh, a Brighton loan, Graham Potter, top of the Premier League-ish, playing really well, an amazing coach, good style of play. And then you think, crap, Colwell's on loan there. You can only loan one player, which would mean Billy Gilmore would probably be going on a permanent... <sighs> Many of you would still be like, yeah, fine. It's still a great move for a young player who's not going to play it for Chelsea at the moment. Send him there. And what's our favorite phrase? Buyback clause, baby. If we want one of those for perhaps a nominal fee and he does ball out and become a sensational Premier League midfielder, then you've got the option to buy him back. What do you think about Billy Gilmore? I wanted to start with that story because it was an interesting one. He does need to sort himself out. Well, he needs to find a place. Brighton could be an excellent destination for him. We'll see what happens, and we'll keep close eyes on that, of course, as the stories develop in the transfer window. Moving on up, moving on up. Of course, Chelsea do want Frankie de Jong, Barcelona, and Dutch midfielder. Excellent talent. Looks like a potential long-term successor for kind of for both Jorginho and Kante in terms of his player profile. Um, Chelsea are interested in him. He wants to stay in Barcelona. Now, I was listening to the F one of the Athletic podcasts talk about him, and him and his wife, they look like they absolutely love living in Barcelona. And why wouldn't they? They're at the beaches all the time, they're going to parties, his wife's like drinking and jet skiing, and he has a nice time, couples photos. They do not look like the type of couple that want to leave that life. Certainly for rainy old Manchester, but potentially rainy old West London. I mean, Fulham, South West London is still a you know wicked kind of like metropolis place to live. Maybe he would consider that. Of course, uh, Fabrizio Romano and other reputable journalists have maintained how Chelsea really do want him, despite a midfielder not necessarily being the maximum priority, um, you know, for Fana and maybe a Bamiang slash an attacker, whether Zaha's a, 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 an available target at this point. We'll see what happens. They, they are interested, even though he's not a priority to De Jong. I mean, it's about... De Jong accepting leaving Barcelona. Should he choose to leave Barcelona, he would almost certainly come to Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea have the money and uh, the allure with Champions League football. And he doesn't want to go to Manchester. So London, and of course, we win trophies at Chelsea. Now, <laughs> he was in London. Now, there's all sorts of people saying there was a Donny van der Beek getting married and he was attending his wedding um, people are, and then people saying he's not getting married. <laughs> I, I don't know what's happening. Whether, whether Van Der Beek's getting married or not, 
which is apparently up for debate on social media. You, you can go and research that yourself and figure out whether he, whether he is. I'm not sure he actually has. One thing's for sure. Frankie Dion came to London. Not Manchester. He's come to London. Now, why would he come to London at this point of the season? For a weird break when the weather's turned poor? Or... Is he negotiating a deal? Or at least hearing the pitch from the Chelsea Football Club. Maybe. I'm not reporting that's the case, ladies and gentlemen. I'm merely speculating on what the facts that we know. Frankie de Jong in London. Do what do of that what you will, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah. I would like him to sign. I like I, you know, especially the midfield is how you win league titles granted we all talk about how we want to get this sort of defensive midfielder to protect ourselves in transition um but now we've got we're building a new attack we need to feed the new attack so a midfielder could do that uh let's move on Callum hudson has arrived in Leverkusen to complete his transfer. It was a video going around social media of him speaking to a journalist or a fan who was speaking English to him saying, Hey Callum, you know, welcome to Leverkusen. What, you know, what do you want to do? And Callum was like generic answers, like hopefully go far in the Champions League. I guess they're in the Champions League because he said that. And do well, win as many games as possible and all, yeah, all this kind of stuff. So Callum, good loan by Leverkusen. No option to buy. Two years left on this deal. 21 years old opportunity to perform well in an exciting front three in Bayer Leverkusen in a team that yes has started the season very poorly but could pick up and do well if he does well he could a maximize his value for Chelsea to sell him whether you know buy and pipe up again or I mean Leverkusen if he has a great time there or Dortmund and they're like yeah we'll buy him or Chelsea say yes come back and play do that here sign this new deal you know, high wages, you're a valuable asset, we can sell you in a year again if it doesn't work for 50, 60 million. Sign again. All good news! Callum Hudson and to Bayer Leverkusen, pretty much done! Just an update on Wesley Fofana, by the way. Uh, the Athletic reporting, whether it's David Ornstein and Simon Johnson on multiple different platforms on the website itself and indeed on podcasts, have confirmed the Wesley Fofana fee. Easy for me to say is a lot less than we thought. Well, not a lot less, but remember early doors, it was speculated there would have to be a world record fee, 85 million uh, pounds plus. People even saying 100 million, you know, silly, silly money. But it turns out, including add-ons, including add-ons, it's under 70 million. So the upfront fee could be like, I don't know, 60 million pounds, which all of a sudden makes you think, that's okay. But this young defender who is like recognized as like, you know, one of the best potential in the world. I'm reliably informed by a good friend of mine who plays football manager. He's like the highest rated defender on there in terms of potential. So, you know, he's good. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased to actually to hear about that man, to hear that he's um, he's not going to cost that much money. So Wesley Fafana done. He's in the USA doing his medical bit unorthodox but we've got american owners this is a huge investment for them he had like a bad leg break they want to be sure send him over to their trusted doctors over in yankee doodle land and um, get the thumbs up then complete the deal i dig it and understand it and maybe i just yeah maybe i respect it look man we know what's going on with Zaha. Chelsea were looking at him, as we reported on yesterday, as a potential alternative to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, who Chelsea are having new reservations about due to they want to give him performance incentives in his contract so he perhaps won't get the guaranteed money he gets at Barcelona. you got to score goals to get paid your silly money, big man. Fabrizio Romano tweeting this. New important meeting scheduled on Tuesday. That's today. For Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang with Chelsea and Barcelona. Discussing the structure <clears throat> excuse me, of the deal. Because there's still no full agreement between the two parties. Abba is still waiting for the clubs to agree on a fee. Deal is up to the two clubs now. Of course, Fabrizio Romano that we said yesterday. Long has stated, published that a personal times were agreed with Aubameyang and Chelsea, but Ornstein saying not. 
So there is still conflicting reports of that. But I want to read um, an article here from um, ESPN, translated from Spanish, I'm afraid. It's the Spanish ESPN, so this might be broken English. Barcelona hopes to close the sale of Aubameyang to Chelsea on Tuesday. Hey, that's today. Barcelona hopes the, to close the transfer of Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang to Chelsea this Tuesday to be able to still try and make the transfer in the last hours of the market, according to different sources confirmed uh, by ESPN or to ESPN. In this sense, this, remember this is going to be peculiar English, the sources indicate that the Catalan club will also make one last attempt to sign Marco Alonso, despite the fact the two operations would initially be negotiated separately. Oh my word, can we just complete this Marco Alonso deal to get him to Barcelona? Because, you know, this has got to happen. We're, we're left back FC now. We need to, you know, Emerson's gone to West Ham. Good luck to him. Alonso's got to go at Barca, mate. Barca continues to ask for 20 million euros for Aubameyang. That's all right, isn't it? 20 million euros. Isn't that like 16 million pounds? That's all right. I mean, maybe we, 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 we negotiated Wesley Fofana for a lot less that was in the media. I guess we're trying to do the same with Aubameyang. Uh, they want to increase... Chelsea want to increase offer to a figure in close to 17 million euros. Different sources admit to ESPN on Tuesday that there will be a summit between the two different parties to seal an agreement that satisfies both clubs. On the other hand, Barca continues to look for different options to strengthen its side. Why, bro? Hernandez's priority was to sign a right back due to his lack of confidence he's got in Sergino Dest. Hence them trying to sign um, Cesar Azpilicueta. However, the Catalan club could finally opt to reinforce the left lane with Marcus Alonso, given that the North American international is reluctant to leave the Camp Nou. So what you keep... So, you know, Dest is the up, you know, we, we nearly bought him, didn't we? Uh, as the rotational option at uh, right back. And then obviously you get Marcus Alonso for left back at Barcelona. Look, man. Wesley Fofana's done pretty much, isn't it? I mean, unless there's a peculiar turn of events with his medical, which I don't think would happen, but you don't know. Um, ultimately, not a bad deal at all in terms of how much we got him for in the end. Um, good to get Marcus Alonso out. Um, what have we got in terms of exits? It does seem like Ajax will get um, uh, Hakim Ziyech once the deal for Anthony is completed to Manchester United. So we got Lukaku, Werner, Ziyech, Hudson Adoy, four attackers out of the door uh we've only probably two in with Raheem Sterling and probably Pierre Emerick Aubameyang they have looked at Zaha but if they can get Aubameyang over the lines it won't be Zaha Armando Bruyer is likely to stay so he could be four out three in which is totally fine considering we had too many attackers we've still got people like Havertz and Pulisic that will really want to try and prove themselves uh in terms of being regular fixtures uh, Mason Mount hasn't had the most like, offensively good start to the season either. It's really only Raheem Sterling leading the way, looking good. So everyone's got it all to prove. And um, I do think Fofana and Aubameyang will happen. And ultimately, that will complete a pretty darn strong window if you consider the first team players. And indeed, the youth players with all, you know, your Chuck Wilmakers, Cesar Cassidy's. We're still looking at that Russian kid. Obviously, if that picks up, we'll re reflect on it here. And uh, yeah, it could be a really strong window ultimately. Getting Alonso out as well is good. Um, of course, I should mention it. Pour one out for Ross, the boss, Barkley, the preseason, Zidane. Uh, Chelsea and Barkley have both agreed mutually to terminate his contract, giving him the opportunity to go sign elsewhere on a free transfer um, and get good wages-ish. I think both Celtic and Rangers want him and maybe a couple of Premier League clubs. Uh, that's quite good of Chelsea because, um, you know, they spent... I know they didn't spend that much, but they spent £15 million on him and he has to be worth something. But that's, uh, I mean, he's probably on relatively high wages, so they probably thought, just go do your thing, mate. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, thanks, Ross, for the odd go here and there. And, you know, maybe you'll go sign for Everton on a free. That'll be interesting. What do you think, though, guys? Thank you for joining me. Start up the conversation down in the comment section below. Um, you're welcome to subscribe. Hit the bell if you do. And uh, keep it locked, man, because things are moving quickly. See you very soon. Peace.